do 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 God damn it! Have you had this issue? Well, I have a way to fix it. And yes, it is super complicated. So the big thing here is that automation recently updated how their downforce is done. Previously, it was only wings that would work. So you'd have to put a wing here, you'd have to hide a wing up the front, these little winglets sometimes if you use the right thing without downforce. But now everything is all run through this brand spanking new fangdangle sort of thing that I do not really seem to understand. The advantage is, is this graph is a lot more accurate. Not 100% accurate. This is not 100% accurate. And it's also prone to mistakes. So, how do I propose that we fix this? Well, first, we're going to export the car, and we're not going to use unbreakable fixtures, which otherwise is a fantastic thing. I'll tell you how to fix that, though. So, export the car. You can go ahead and ignore this, then bring the car into BeamNG. Oh, God, it's doing that no clipping thing. <sighs> Go into automation and re-export your car. And back in BeamNG, it is... Fixed. Good. Everything seems correct. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how things have changed a little bit. So we're going to hit Control T and Control N. And you'll notice here that it's got these wing nodes here. And if we hold Control, you can see them illuminate. And those are actually from the old code. And hope to God that they're going to keep them there and don't get rid of these. Please, devs, don't get rid of this functionality. And I'll show you why in a second. So what's happened is they've removed the wing plane that used to be here. You can see this on an older car. Here's an example from my old Suzukon video. God, I love this car so much. And you can see here that these wing notes are actually in use. They're creating these flat planes. And that comes down to pretty much one thing. So with all of these things, you scroll down to flex bodies and in here you've got your wings, which is where all your wing stuff starts. Then it comes down to here where it makes the nodes, which are these things here, which are just floating in the middle of nowhere. Then it's got all of the beams connecting them together together and them to the body nodes which are these little a71 a39 sort of things and this is where it changes if we scroll all the way down to the last section of this right down at the bottom somewhat here we go triangles this in here used to have a whole lot more information in fact here's the code for the suzukon you see here that it's got a drag coefficient and a lift coefficient yeah that's gone and if we scroll down to the very bottom of the code it ends with just the triangles of the body now this means that the body is entirely secure which means you can also give it like an air pressure and give it buoyancy but we'll talk about that another day maybe what used to happen at the end of the body stuff is you would then have the triangles for the wings created and this is where things used to create their downforce. So I found a previous car which had a lot of wings, which would be this behemoth here. Then I made my own new file, which is basically just only creating the triangles that previously existed. And this would be perfect as is if automation worked the way we expected it to. Right, this is where things get a little bit complicated. Um... You know what? No, I'll just show you. So first, let's go in and unpack this mod. Then open up the unpacked mod, go into it, into vehicles, and into the name of the car. Then take a copy of this and put it into here. Now, I've set this up in a very specific way as well. Slot type cam so mod, which takes advantage of this brand spanking new line of code, which I love and thank you, devs, for putting in. If only you could put in like multiple lines of this for by default, that would be fantastic. Like three, maybe four, 15, thousand of these that'd be great and what that means is we can now go in hit control w or vehicle config and then additional modifications is now available as an option because there's something to go there then i've set a thing called real wings and hey presto we've got our triangles back but weird yeah, see, this is something that oh, I didn't realize until I tried to do this. The way in which this works is it sets up two triangles to fit in this area. Unfortunately, this isn't always set out exactly the same way. And that is really annoying. Usually what's meant to happen is we're meant to go with the first number after wing is what wing number it is. And then the following number is which node it is. And there's usually eight nodes. We usually go zero, one, two, three, then four, five, six, seven. And it doesn't always export that way. Ah! But relax, I know how to fix this. So the first one we're gonna do is from zero to three, 
to seven on wing zero. So in here, we got wing zero. From zero to zero seven to zero three. So that's all good. Okay, control S, come in here. You'll see the first one will move up there. You go, don't you love it? Now we gotta change this one to two, six, and seven. So that's two, zero, six, and zero, seven. Save that, come back in, control R, and look. We now have our wing plane back in. Now, this is where I'm going to scrap all of this and start again. Now, I have a very good reason as to why I'm about to do this. And that's because this body is actually generating a buttload of downforce without this added wing stuff. And we don't want that to happen. Also, drag is all over the place, all that kind of stuff. So what we're actually going to do is generate a lot less downforce. Now tune this how you want, but I have a hidden wing in the front, so really the thing that you could do here is just kind of tune this to act as if maybe how you would want a underbody diffuser to work. Then hopefully we won't get the error on export as well, but we're going to call this one the Mark Light. Go ahead and export this baby. We're going to make sure we don't click on breakable fixtures. I almost clicked that by just pure instinct. Then click export. Hopefully this time it doesn't come up with the error. Dum 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 And look at that! No error this time! And now we've spawned in said car. Control T, control N, still got all our nodes and everything there. Let's go ahead and unpack the marquee light. And we're gonna take this to grid map so we can drive it really far. So let's open up our trusty notepad. And we are currently creating 424 on the front and 368 on the rear. And we'll set this to about 200 kilometers an hour and see what downforce we create. And we're generating around 468 kilograms on the front and 404 on the rear. So as you can see, we've got about an extra 24 on the front and an extra 34 on the rear. Now, let's put in the new mod. Paste that in there. Control R, Control W, put the mod in. Have a look at, oh, look at that. We've actually got a rear wing that's horizontal this time. See, it's kind of arbitrary and random whether it'll do what you want it to do. See, like, this has always worked down here on the front. It's so peculiar. But if we come down to a hidden wing that we've got down here, we'll see that it's not actually creating a wing plane here. What's happened is it's created a bit of a rear plane back here. Yeah, that's not what we want. But we're gonna test it out to see how it goes immediately. So, set this again to 200. And if we go ahead and pause this, we can see that we're very much weighted on one side, on the front, and then the opposite side on the rear. Either way, this is 511 to 442. Wait, I just realized that it's actually both weighted on the same side. Well, whatever, you get the idea. We are now generating a buttload more downforce. Also, we will be generating more drag, so keep that in mind. Towards the end of the video, I'll I'll show you actually how to reduce the drag cross that's in the middle of the car. If you don't know what the drag cross is, it's this little doohickey here. This thing. You make that smaller, you create less drag. You're not actually changing any of the numbers or values. What you're doing is changing where these va uh, these nodes are to be closer together so then they're smaller. So let's go ahead and fix things. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fix this front wing. So we wanna go from 82 to 86 and 87. So wing eight, we're gonna go from 82, 87 and 86. That's created one of the planes. Now we need to go from 82 to 83 and 87. 83. Three, save that, come back. And now we fixed up that one. As for these little doodads, that one seems to be doing fine. And this one seems to be doing fine. So that's actually all the wings we got. We don't really have any other wings on this car. The rest of it's just basically for looks. Remove all of this junk out of the way and set it to 200. And that's looking good. Pause. Now I'm also seeing that our weight is actually a lot more even this time. And I think that's because we did fix the wing. I think that was actually causing us to have a lot more issues than what you would normally have in the default settings. So 479, which is less, but more even. And 407 on the rear. So fixed and more even. Also, probably actually on average more on the front. I suppose I should have taken down both numbers, but you get the idea. We have now fixed our aero issue and we've got all the downforce we want. So if that's all you wanted to know on how to fix aero, that's as far as we go. If, however, 
you love me and you want to see more of me making video, I've got coming up some more stuff with this right now. And the first thing I should really say is where I got inspiration to make this car. And that really came from when I was a wee lad, I played a game called Le Mans 24 seven, wait, no, 24 hours. <laughs> oh dear, that was, oh my God, the nostalgia for that game. But I never really did play it very much because it just, at the time, I sucked at racing games. And that meant that I never got past the beginning car, which is what this is based upon. The Marcos Mantra. Yeah, and as you can see, it's an exact replica. They're exactly the same in every conceivable way. Like, you, you, you just can't tell the difference whatsoever. See, 100% exacto mundo, the same thing. Yep. <laughs> anyway, being a Le Mans game, I thought I would finally get around to getting the new Le Mans track. This big behemoth track is Le Mans. And I kind of want to see if I've gotten better racing by taking this one around. Is that the start line back here? Let's go back to the start line. And let's go ahead and just start hot lapping. So I have no ABS on this beast, but I do have a sequential gearbox, all that sort of goodness. And I'm gonna go ahead right now, oh, hold on, let's pause this quickly, go into advanced, toggle details, hide advanced. Now we have our timer up. We know nothing about this car or the company that in which it came from. I just know that it was in my childhood. I loved it. Now, the reason why you may want to fix... Oh, God, I was about to say fix this downforce issue is... Be Whoa, I could see through that. What the hell? What the hell? Okay, this map is not polished yet. Anyway, yeah, so the, <laughs> the reason why you might want to do this is because, unfortunately, current downforce is inexplicably linked to drag. So... Unfortunately, if you create too much downforce, you lose the drag cross, which is absolutely fine. We can do away with that thing forever and never see it again. The problem is uh, why my brakes suck horribly. Anyway, we're on to the more sand straight right now. But uh, yeah, so your wings will generate a lot of drag to create a lot of downforce. The unfortunate thing is, is you're creating way too much drag. Drag and downforce are not the same thing and not derived the same way. You can have an under tray which creates lots of downforce, but very low drag. So unfortunately, that's why I'm saying that I'm fixing downforce because currently, oh wait, oh, I was meant to turn around. Well, whatever. <laughs> Uh, let's just see if we can spot the next one coming up. There was no barricades whatsoever there. There was barely any markings. I'm, I don't really know the new Le Mans track quite so well. I know it from Gran Turismo. But that's about it. Oh, I think we're coming up to a turn here. And the brakes on this are sh shockingly bad. So I have actually played this in the default setting of the car. And that actually creates a very good vehicle. So you do actually have to go in and retune this every single time you want to do something because currently this car is not as good as the base game version of the car and we can actually just test it out. Once we're done here, we'll take out the default version of the car that has the broken downforce and you see that uh, it doesn't have as a higher top speed and whatnot, but it should handle a lot better also. Uh, <laughs> I'm probably going to be a little bit better at the track by the second time we go around. So here we go. We're at two and a half minutes and we've just finished the Morsan Strait. And I, yeah, we're going to skip the corner again for the uh, car going around. This, it actually feels quite stable. I think there's just some tuning to be done. And I'll go into the tuning in a second. The, the moment I finish this, we'll talk about tuning. And then we'll uh, bring up the next car and we'll do a time trial with that. So start breaking about here. It's... Got long braking. Oh, you know what? I thought I had to brake a lot more than what I did. No, god damn it! All right, that's fine. We'll just reset and keep going. <laughs> the brakes are struggling hard. And I think it's because with the change in downforce, they're maybe differently tuned at the moment because these feel spongy and unresponsive. I almost want to turn ABS off entirely, but no, you, you shouldn't do that. What you can do is you can go into the tuning menu and just change your uh, settings there. Aside from that, though, this feels quite balanced. Ah, oh, okay. Oh, damn it. Oh, damn. You know what? Let's retry this. This time, however, we're going to take both corners, and I think we're, what, 
280 kilometers an hour so not too bad or oh, a little bit under steer under there under braking i think that's because our brakes are poorly tuned at the moment but that can be easily fixed if we spend enough time that's not what we're going for here today today we're just going for bland hold on i just forgot to check do i have I don't have the additional modification on. God damn it. No wonder brakes are sucking so bad. All right, let's retry this again. I am such an idiot. All right, fresh timer. First corner, brakes feel a little bit better. Oh, little bit of oversteer there, but that's fine. You know what? This is feeling better already. Oh, I'm so concerned about going over that because in one of my test drives or like a failed laps, I went over that and it popped a tire and I don't want that to happen again. But here we go. Oh, damn it. You know what? Brakes and handling are not as so much better as I, I would like. Slow it down for the first chicane on Mossland Strait. And now, wow, I braked much sooner than what I was expecting. Little bit of understeer there, but that's fine. You do still have minor error control. You can go into, hold on, control W into tuning. You still can change this a little bit. It won't have a huge amount of effect. We'll have to go into proper tuning later. Hold on, get rid of that. Nope, thank you. <laughs> Let's uh, keep going down the more sand straight. And where we crashed last time. I mean, the first time for the last time, like, you know what I mean? Not the second time we crashed, but the first time we crashed on the last track, the, not the last lap that we did, because we've done like five laps in between of me, like not being very good at racing. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay, we've made it further than last time and it is feeling a whole lot better. Now, I'm going to be honest, I was never really good at this track or good at sim racing games at all. So I never really made it this far into labs. Most of the time back in the day, I would be stopping much earlier. So I don't actually know what is around this section of the course. I do have the old version of this track uh, from, I think it was the 1960s or something. But that's very different. It looks very different. Things are, I'm, uh, are just different just straight up different like these concrete barriers on the side yeah that none of that existed there was just, just farmland i really don't know this map very well at all should i make this my new map because i do love the idea of the mom i just only really watch highlights of racing these days i don't actually watch racing itself but here we go get into the final goal oh, brakes are no good that's fine let's turn in here Turn in here, and wait. Why is my timer not going? What did it? Did my t when did my timer stop? Are you kidding me? I'm so angry right now. Fine, let's do it again. And let's bring it down. I'm doing much better when I'm in full sweat mode. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to full sweat mode. And here we go and cross the line at a 438 you know what that's not the worst time in the world for a car that is actually not a uh, v-type engine which the original marcos is god damn it the camera's way too fast there but in fact actually a lovely straight six creating about 400 horsepower from about three point i think five liters and not a particularly high revving one for a race car. It's only about eight and a half thousand RPM. Let's now go pick the other one. Just the regular old Marky Mark. Let's start our hot lapping. And I'm going to go full sweat mode on this as well. Oh, so much smoother. I'll put in that little bit of a clip there. That was just in and around the corners. I'm, I'm not saying that my way is easier or like the right way to do it. What I'm saying is like, if you're trying to do more advanced stuff, it is the way to go. Currently working with the current system, not great, but simplistic and it just works mostly. Uh, what I offer is a more complicated, but more comprehensive way of making the car that you actually want. Look at my top speed. We're only reaching around 270, which is so much slower. And I... Oh, no. Well, shoot. 
And across the line. 4.43. I feel that that's probably within margin of error, honestly. 4.38? Yeah, there's only a five second difference. So they're going to be about the same. So now, tuning. What we do is we will first put on our wing so we can see what we're looking at. And much like explained in this video, we're going to show you how to edit things. That's probably the one I would suggest you look at, though. So open up your unpacked vehicle, go into vehicles, into the name of the vehicle. Then you're going to look for a J-beam file named after the car. Then what you're going to do is you're going to look for the wing nodes at the back which are wing 07 that's a little bit hard to see and wing 06 so control f wing 06 now that's not to be confused if you had a wing that was called wing zero what you want to do is find exactly the node and then this has three numbers this is how wide away from the center it is how far away from the front or back it is uh, on, in the car like longitudinally and this one is the node for height so for wing six and wing seven if you wanted more downforce you would add more height if you want to make adjustable yeah go watch that video that one uh, will make it a whole lot easier and that's how you would tune this but if you just want to do fine control tuning very quickly you could still actually use this because we still have as you can see down here we got a little lip down here and that is creating downforce and then the same on the back there is lips on here but also the wings are still actually being calculated for downforce but it's not actually these wings that are changing what's changing is this wing that's hidden in here and you can kind of see it there's the corner of it this blue plane is how it newly creates downfall. So everything is all calculated in there. You can just use that for minor tuning if you choose so. But if you want to do the way that I've said it, uh, I've said it, I've said it, it should actually uh, generate less drag if you use my wings to gener uh, generate downforce compared to theirs. Not to mention in here, there's stuff to tune as well. You've got a, this is the wings fixing file that I've uh, given you. Uh, drag coefficient, you don't want to set to zero because drag and lift are still a little bit in tune. You, you can have a fiddle with these and see how that all works as well. So that that's everything. That is the video done. Except, is it? Of course it's not. We're going to do Phil Hill. And this car is, you know, pretty road legal. It's got all of the indicators. It's got the windshield wipers. It's got like some kind of crash protection. Probably, I don't know about an airbag or anything. But, you know, it's doing... Uh, it's done this to be a road car. So let's go ahead and see what we do around here. Now we could go full sweat mode, but I'm also like not wanting to have to do commentary over a uh, full sweat mode lap. Oh, this turns in pretty nicely. And this is the version with the wing. I made sure to save my preset as uh, I've shown in my previous video. So it... um is the version I want. Oh, this is doing quite nicely, quite smooth. Oh, a little bit of understeer there. But then again, I found that with the other version of the car as well. God damn it. With the uh, the straight standard version with the downforce, the way in which you would normally set it. So let's try this again, shall we please? All right, here we go again. This time we're much better. We'll almost make exactly the same mistake. And let's break into the first hairpin. Oh, nice. All right, good. Going past T-junction, quite smooth. Oh, this is doing quite well. So I'm concerned we're probably going to be going too fast for here. So we'll break early and... Nope. Okay, yeah. Coming over that rise reduces the weight off the front end of the vehicle, especially it being the heavier part. <sighs> and that meant that we lost traction for braking. Let's do this again, shall we? And this time we braked correctly. Nice. Now, I should go in and say that the developer has said that they're going to try to fix this. But in the meantime, this is really our only recourse. And I get the feeling that when he says fix it, I'm not quite sure if he's going to, you know, fix it, fix it. Also, I do like the dynamic nature that this creates. So, like, uh, damaging wings. You have to be very precious with your body work to not ruin your aerodynamics, which is something that I really do kind of miss not only that look like a uh, not only wings i meant to say but it also like the general body shape if you bent your body into a more drag inducing sort of way it uh would then create more drag that's not so much the ma uh, the thing anymore it, all, the only thing that you really damage is your suspension or wheels but there we go at uh, one minute 
38. What an overshoot. What is that like our third fastest car? It is our third fastest car. It's right behind the absolute death trap that <laughs> was the speedster. Oh my goodness. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. Oh my god, we're way out in the boonies now. Um yeah, let's go ahead and rewind. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Maybe not the back end of this car, since it doesn't look quite as good as the front end of this car. I did spend a lot more time on the front, but that's mainly because the back end, there's not really a whole lot I could do to make it look like the actual Marcos. The Marcos looks so much different on the rear. The front end, I think I did a fairly decent job of making it look similar. So, I hope you have enjoyed today's video. This is going to be it right now. Like, legitimately, um, there's no more surprises. We're all done. But for now, I hope you guys will enjoy yourself enough... Wait, I hope you guys have enjoyed yourself well enough to uh, like and subscribe if you're not uh, already liking Zs and subscribing Zs. And uh, join me next time. But for now, I'll catch you all next time. God damn it.